So in this video, we're going to do a little bit of exploration uh, of what we've found so far. And uh, we're going to consider a car that has a mass of 1,000 kilos. It's got maximum power of 51 kilowatts, and we're going to assume that that's um, the same throughout. And it's got a maximum speed of 99 miles per hour. Okay, so the power output for all of these will be 51. And we're going to look at what happens uh, for the car when it goes through these speeds. So 30 miles per hour, 40, 70, 90, and 110. And we're going to look at uh, the car's acceleration through these at these speeds. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is to convert those miles per hour into meters per second. Now, a um, quick way of doing this is on a Casio class whiz, I'm going to use the conversion. I'm going to type in 30 first, then go shift number 8. Now, what we need to do, because there's no direct conversion for miles per hour to meters per second, I'm going to have to first convert into kilometers, so miles into kilometers. Uh, so my result would be how many kilometers per hour 30 miles per hour is. And then I need to convert that into meters per second, which there is a button for. So I've got the 30. I'm going to press shift, then 8. And I'm going to go to length first. And number 7 will convert it from miles into kilometers. Now I'm going to leave that on the screen. I haven't pressed anything else. I'm now going to press shift and number 8, and that will convert that number, uh, scrolling down to velocity, and convert that into from kilometers per hour to meters per second. So it'll look quite complicated what your screen is, but if you just press equals, you should get 8,382 over 625. So 13.4112. And that means 30 miles per hour is 13.4112 metres per second. OK, so I'm just going to go back into that. I'm going to change it to 40. And I should be getting 17.8816. OK, going back into it and then pressing, changing it to 70. So that's 31.2928. Go back in, change it to 90. And we get 40.2336 and change it to 110 and we get 49.1744. Okay. So, assuming in each of these cases that there are no resistance forces, um, we can work out the acceleration with the driving force. Now the driving force, of course, uh, we have that power is equal to the driving force times the velocity. Okay, so we can work out the driving force by dividing the power in watts by the velocity. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to get 51,000 and I'm going to divide it by the velocity in meters per second, so 13.4112. Okay, so I get 3802.791696. Okay, I'm just going to write down the full calculator display. Uh, then 51,000 divided by 17.8816. And we have 2,852.093772. Okay, all right, I'm going to change it now to 51,000 divided by 31.2928. And so that's 1,629.76787. Okay, change it to 51,000 divided by 40.2336. So 1,267.597232. And last one, 49.1744. And I get 1,037.125008. Okay, so then 
Uh, that's my only force that's going horizontal. And so then we've got F equals MA, Newton's second law. And that will be um, our driving force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So the acceleration will be the driving force divided by the mass. Now the mass in this case is 1000. So the acceleration here will be 3.80 um, to 3 sig fig. Dividing that one by 1000, we're going to get 2.85 to 3 sig fig. Then dividing that one by 1000, 1.63 to 3 sig fig. Divide the next one by 1000, 1 1.27 to 3 sig fig. And then the last one, 1 1.04 to 3 sig fig. OK, so we've done all of our calculations. So there are a few things to note here. First thing is that this was the information I was given about the car. And I was told the maximum speed is 99 miles per hour. So how is it that I've gone past 99 miles per hour, but the car is still accelerating? How could that be the case? Well, consider where the problem was or what um, assumptions I have made to come to that value, to come to that calculation. Because in here, when I was doing F equals MA, I said we're going to ignore the resistance forces. And that is why we are getting this uh, strange result here. It's not quite fitting in with this maximum speed. So because we ignored air resistance and frictional forces, this isn't quite right. This isn't accurate. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is that as um, the driving force, um, or sorry, as the, the speed increases, the acceleration is decreasing. So it's important to note that when we are trying to find the maximum speed of a car or a motorbike or a lorry or something like that, then we are looking at the acceleration getting closer and closer and closer to zero. So the maximum speed should occur when the acceleration is zero. And the last thing that we should note from this is these problems involve the acceleration changing. And the consequence of that is that we have the constant acceleration formulae, the SUVAT equations, which we often use to work with problems um, involving velocities and uh, distances and things like that. We can't really use them here. Okay? They rely on the acceleration being maintained at a constant rate. Okay? So uh, because of that, uh, the SUVAT formulae uh, are out. And that means we're going to have to rely on energy methods, so using the work energy principle in order to calculate velocities as we need it. Okay, so there are a few things here to come out of this exploration um, for you to consider. So thinking about um, the modelling assumptions that we use, uh, the lack of resistance forces, thinking about that um, the acceleration goes to zero when we're at the maximum speed, and that the acceleration is changing, so uh, the SUVAT formula are out and the energy methods are in.